All right, welcome back. Now, let's discuss something else, and this is quite worrying. It's been close to two weeks now since Akbar Jalingo, a journalist, anti-corruption activist, and publisher of online news outlet Crossover Watch, was arrested in Lagos by operatives of the police uh, intelligence response team and driven to Crossover State, where he is currently been detained. Now, following a series of articles questioning how public funds are being handled in Cross River State, Jalingo had on July 17th made a publication about the Cross River State Microfinance Bank. In the article, he demanded an explanation for the 500 million naira approved for the establishment of the state owned bank as several visits to the bank over a duration of eight months revealed there was no activity taking place there. Now, about a month later, Jalingo got an invitation from the Cross River State Police Command over the publication, and both parties had agreed to meet on Monday, August the 26th. But in a sudden twist of event, he was picked up before the arranged date. On August the 22nd, a team of federal special anti-robbery squad reportedly stormed his wife's office and had one of his staff lead them to Jalingo's house, uh, where he was arrested and later transferred on a journey by road to Calabar at midnight the next day. I must add here that that journey took almost two days before they eventually uh, got to Calabar. Quite a difficult journey to be candid. He has since been detained at a facility where there is controlled access to him. Joining me on the program right now to discuss more about this is um, Onyeka Chubani who of course, uh, the former second vice president of, or vice president, I should say, of the Nigerian Bar Association. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, on the big, program. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you. Quite worrying. What, what, mm -hmm. what do you make of this? I mean, the way and manner he was arrested, uh, there had been an agreement that he, he would appear. Of course, I mean, in Jalingo style, he, he published it and made it known to everybody on social media that he was going to honor the invitation of the police, but then the police decided to uh, strike mm. before they agreed date. Well, uh, Jalingo's uh, travel is, is like those uh, movies you watch, you know, in, in Nollywood. I mean, if any person, you know, has actually told me that uh, Jalingo will pass the, the, the kind of process and kind of torture that is uh, passing through at this time of our nascent democracy, I will, I will actually tell the person that he's joking, but that it can happen. But uh, here we are. With Jalingo's story, you know, every day, you know, taking a new turn, taking a new twist, you know, and becoming very uh, something that is uh, something you cannot in any way define properly. As you rightly pointed out, Jalingo had had a running battle uh, with the state governor. It started with when he queried the usage of local government funds, funds. by the governor. And, 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 and it's like the battle line was drawn. And he started to point out some of the deficiencies in the, in the government, you know, of, uh, of Cross River State. And some of the promises the man has made, which he has not fulfilled. fulfilled. And then, you know, culminated into this uh, microfinance uh, bank, uh, bank uh, venture, uh, which he also, you know, queried and said, look, you withdrew such money and you said you have opened the bank and the bank is moribund, it's not functional. You know, and then he took, uh, we w followed up uh, his post to how the governor has been, was responding to those issues at every occasion, at every event, yeah, yeah, exactly. the governor was was becoming even more direct to the extent that he had, had to even, you know, uh, uh, told the entire world that uh, Jalingo has no issue, and that at the time they gave uh, Jalingo one million naira for for an operation. This, I mean, these things are personal issues that you don't expect a governor to 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 descend so low into, but he did. And then the next thing was this invitation by the Nigerian police. You police. know, I, I said no, no problem. You know, let's have a let's have an agreement as to the date. They wrote him an official letter, and that date is twenty, I think twenty six yeah. of August, and he said we'll be there. And so it was surprising that the same police that have invited him even discussed with him orally that okay, don't bother coming on twenty six. We'll give you up to third of uh, September to come. He said no, I'm coming on twenty six. Came two or three days earlier, and then took him on a very long journey. He said, look, can we go by flight? Mm. It's not necessary taking me through this uh, long journey. They said no. And it took two days for them to arrive at uh, uh, Calabar. Calabar. And up to now, they have kept him in detention. Now, the funny aspect, I, 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 yes. Okay, go, the go funny ahead. aspect of this whole uh, uh, scene is that up to now, they have not preferred any charge against, against him. him. They are looking, they are fishing for. They have toyed with the idea of courtism. 
of courtism. They have toyed with the idea of trying to overthrow the government. government. They have toyed with the idea of uh, gun running. They have toyed with the idea, you know, of several other offenses, both known and unknown. The latest one is that today uh, he was uh, served with a court process in a purely civil, purely civil uh, process concerning a public depositor, a, a so-called depositor with the microfinance bank, bank, who is now alleging that. And if it's a civil matter, yes, the police should have no. But why, why will he arrest him and, and then uh, put him in detention? Only for him to be served with a, a civil suit. Today, I heard, I got that information uh, from somebody that is in Calabar and all that. So, uh, as I'm speaking to you, I am very upset, and I think Nigerians should be upset with what is going on with uh, Agba Jalingo. I mean, it shouldn't happen in this democratic uh, era. In which it's, quite, it's, it's quite baffling. Baffling, it's quite wrong, totally unacceptable, and totally condemnable that this is happening in Nigeria in this century. You have allegation against somebody for God's sake, and you came all the way to arrest him. Up to now, you have not preferred any charge. Now the lawyers have gone to court to enforce his fundamental human rights. Human right. And then they now went to the Nigerian police to serve them. They refused service. They refused service. They said they cannot. Now on, on that, that I mean, I mean this is, what, this what is wrong. What can happen? Well, they have come back to now prepare for some, you know, motion for substance service. You know, I mean, they, they, that is another way to serve somebody who is evading service. But that is wrong in the first place. Now you know our court system. They have refused to hear that now, application. Now the, the question here they is: the, the question Monday. here is, look, yes, the governor is involved. Yes. Uh, you, you know, no, no doubt at all. It's 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 very glaring that the Cross River State government is involved. Di directly is involved, yes. Directly yes. involved. Yes. But we is it all? Can, can we exonerate mm. the hierarchy of the police from that? Because there's just no way this can be happening, and yes. the the Inspector General of Police wouldn't know. About I don't know this. whether the the IG of of, of 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 the Federation is aware of this, but if he's not aware, I think somebody must have because by publication, I mean this thing has been on the social media. He has also been on the mainstream media that this young man has been wrongly arrested. Because the by impression, the, CP the impression we would get is yeah. that the IG of Police actually yes. sanctioned yes. that raid that on is his home in Lagos. About this. I mean, when, whatever action the ICP is taking is assumed that the IG is aware. Of course, it stops at his level. I, I had expected by now that this must have been pointed to him that this is what is going on and he should have you know asked what is going on in cross river why is this man being arrested and why is he not being charged we're not even saying that look you cannot arrest somebody, arrest somebody who is alleged to, to have committed exactly. alleged to have committed a charge crime. him to court for god's sake what we're saying in this country is that if you arrest somebody suspect you must know what the constitution provides the constitution says 24 hours or if there is no call within radius 48 now, if you must now detain him beyond, you have to go to court. To court. But then we also have to be careful with that issue of going to court because the court cannot be used now to legitimize illegal detention. Because it appears that's what we're beginning that to is see what, with the yeah, case with, of yeah, Shaw, right? which, which is wrong. And I think that it's a hard time, you know, we pointed it out at the you know, just recently concluded conference of the Nigerian Bar Association. The judiciary should not lend itself to be used by the executive in order to infringe on people's rights, on uh, violate people's rights. The law is specific as to time of charging an individual who is alleged to have committed a crime. Quite this issue of going to court and then making that order. And keep someone for 45 days. Yeah, ex parte. Ex -parte. Is the, what is even you know, baffling. If you must detain me beyond the constitutionally guaranteed time, let me know why you must detain me beyond that time. So I should be put on notice. So this issue of using ex parte, using ex parte order, in order to detain somebody beyond the time allowed by the constitution is something every every sane human being more. we must fight it and get it right in this country if you must put me in detention beyond the time the constitution has allowed let me know why you must happen it must happen that way let me also be, appear before the same court and tell the court that this is wrong that i have not committed this crime that if this man has any allegation against me that i should be brought so, so before the you so the court can hear you yeah, as let, well let, and, let not then, and exonerate me because there's presumption of innocence which our law still guarantees you no know? so i think uh, what is going on in uh, in, uh, in cross river is clearly uh, something that every Nigerian should be interested can, in. Can we say this is basically, you know, a muzzling of the press, a muzzling of free speech? Because, look, people should be free to criticize. Mm -hmm. And um, what you can do is to mm -hmm. ask the people who have made uh, such criticism now mm -hmm. to just come forward and prove. That's right. To arrest them yeah. and then, you know, clam them into yeah. detention. It's intimidation. It's intimidation. It's clearly intimidation and it's a violation of the right of freedom of press. The press must be allowed to do their duty. In the Nigerians are, have a right to, you know, criticize the government, especially when the criticism is very constructive. Now, if you now do the criticism and you infringe the right of the governor or whoever you have, you know, the law is there. 
bring the person before the court, competent court of judicial. Let this person be here. That issue of fair hearing is very key. But putting somebody in the illegal detention and now trying to, as if you have sentenced the person now to, to, to how many years imprisonment without that person being here is something that all of us should condemn. These governors have become so intolerant. And it's not only with crossing, it, it, almost it, it all appears of us, so. All it the governors so. in Nigeria, they are behaving like thing gods who cannot be criticized, whose orders are, you know, must be obeyed by all and sundry. You have no right to look and, into and the administration. And it's a democracy. Yeah, it's a democracy, for God's sake. If I, it is even good for people to criticize your government so that you can make and mend, if there is any. For, for you now to become highly intolerant, intolerant of any criticisms, intolerant of people saying anything against your government, intolerant of people holding you accountable, is something that we must begin to you know, condemn and say, no, it cannot happen. You know how we fought for this democracy and how we have gotten it. These guys cannot turn democracy into, into dictatorship and something we must all rise up and condemn and say it cannot happen. What is happening in developed economies, and I'm saying this with every sense of responsibility. Yeah, sometimes you wonder is, if what happens in the U.S. Yes, can actually happen here, yes, where the President of the yes. United States is criticized I mean, almost on a daily basis. I mean, basis. Uh, they have even insulted him, you know, even in White House. Remember the, the incident yeah, that happened absolutely. between him and the CNN man? And, and the person was returned back to CNN. So the point is this. We must try as much as possible to ensure that we protect this democracy that, you know, everyone fought for. We must not allow individuals to become dictators who cannot allow people to criticize them or hold them accountable in governance. One of the primary responsibility of the press and every responsible citizen is to look at governance and see whether the leaders are doing it right. If they're not getting it right, you'll be able to... Point what what, what exactly, we, we have to wrap up now, yes. what exactly would you be telling the, the, the police authority now? Yes. Because there's just no way the Inspector General of Police would not know about this. Yes. Akba Jalingo has been kept there for close to two weeks. That's right. uh, uh, it's, it's difficult to understand how the police would carry, uh, well, it's a cross-border operation, if you yes, like, because yes. across They came uh, all the way from cross yes. So, uh, I to mean, carry out that kind of operation, operation without, without the knowledge And then up to now, you have not, you know, preferred it. So, my, my take is, look at the FBI list and, all, and how they do it, is that before they take you in, they have concluded an investigation. investigation. They, they started investigating this FBI, FBI matter as, as far back as 2016, 2016 and we are now in yeah. 2019 before they now started to pronounce and make arrest. Now, within a short time, this matter has to go to court. That's how it works. It doesn't, it don't, it doesn't, it doesn't work. But in our right. case here, you are you arrest and then begin to mm -hmm. fish. What they're doing now, you know, they have toyed with several ideas. How to charge him. They're talking about gun running. They're talking about trying to talk with the government of uh, Cross River State. Even uh, according to <laughs> the information I got, he said that particular allegation is very stupid. That's what he said in the statement. So he toppled with who? You know, they now brought somebody now to come and lie that, that he, he sold a gun to. You know, all manner of allegations. Like they are looking, they are fishing for information. It's, it doesn't happen anywhere except in Nigeria. You have arrested somebody and you they arrested him because he, according to you, has committed a crime. Because if they had evidence, Beautiful. they ought to Why don't you him not, don't take him to court? Why are you not toying with all manner of ideas? You know, gun running, oh, he is a terrorist or he is a courtist and all that. They toy with the idea that he was one that laid the issue of uh, revolution now yeah. in Lagos. I mean, why he was in Lagos? He, if he has committed the offense in Lagos, why are you taking him to cross the And that he was going him? to use the beret of revolution I, it, now to cause. Because, you know, uh, I know that. For God's sake, you know, okay, please, okay. let's do things right. This is a country that all of us, you know, we love, you know, and this is not the banana republic. We must not allow Nigeria to descend into anarchy. You know, what is going on now is that these guys are every day provoking Nigerians with their action. You know, not obeying court orders, not respecting rule of law. We must not allow rule of law to be trampled, trampled upon, upon by those whom we have elected to govern us. That is, that, 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 that's period. Absolutely. And that is absolute, you know. So what is going on in Cross River is condemnable. And I'm bringing it to the notice of the IG that he should intervene in this matter and tell his men that if they have any allegation against Agba Jalingo, they should take him to court. And I also want to tell the governor that he should learn to be tolerant of views, of opposing views. He cannot be a thing god who everything he says must, you know, I see him as somebody that is clearly he's, an he's arrogant man. He doesn't while. want any person to criticize him another for God's sake. You know, somebody have to hold you accountable. You were once a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria Absolutely. and a lawmaker. And you have come in to govern people and they are looking at your administration critically in order to see how you can improve on administration. So don't look at Agba Jalingo as an enemy. He was with you. He fought for you to be elected as a governor and order. For the fact that he's not criticizing you means that you have to also look at your own way of governance, whether you are getting it right or not. And then stop being personal, attacking him that he doesn't have any issue and all that. To me, that is the, the, the height of, uh, of, being, of being a bit childish. Uh -huh. So I want this matter... Uh, to be looked into and let Agba Jalingo be charged to court later this Monday so that this matter, you know, uh, let him go and answer whatever allegation he has, uh, is alleged to have committed, committed before the court. You know, that's, that's my take in all this.
Thank you very much sir, for it's coming on the program and thank you for pleasure. your time. Well, um, we just hope uh, that something is done and that uh, especially, especially this is a direct appeal to the Inspector General of Police. Uh, he has to step in. Uh, this is this has gone too far. You, you just don't keep a man uh, for, for this length of time without charging him to court and then you're fishing for evidence. And it's, it's a terrible thing and it is, it's just not good. And this is, to me, this is a clear muzzling of the press and uh, it's a clear muzzling of uh, free speech pure and simple right. so something has to be done and this we just have to bring this episode to an end well that's it on the program if you want to watch it again it's very simple go to our website tv 360 com. you'll find this program and lots more there you can also follow our conversation on our various social media handles thank you very much for watching i'll see you again next week bye bye